Today I thought I'd run through some of the hand tools that I use for model making. First of all, let's look at the blades. So most of you will be familiar with this X-Acto knife. Now I still use this when I want to cut more tougher and thicker materials. However, usually I will use a scalpel such as this one by Swan Morton. I just find that the scalpel gives me a cleaner and more precise cut. I also often have two handles uh, and the purpose of it is you keep a clean new blade on one of the handles to do your cuts with and when the blade begins to dull, I'll transfer it to my other handle which I use only for applying adhesives so that blade can get a bit dirty and that's okay and sometimes you want to apply adhesives with a blade when it's really precise or if, it's, if the, the gap is really really small uh, in, in a place that's hard to reach I will use a blade. Now most of you will be familiar with a steel ruler that's about this thick. However, I also recommend you get a couple of rulers like these with a thinner uh, width so that you can actually measure things in the small gaps within your model. I personally think that the most important measuring and marking tool that you can get is a good engineer square or machinist square such as this one right here. Uh, mine is from More and Right. Apparently these guys mix squares that squares squares so that's pretty accurate and um, you want to make sure your square is true because you know we're dealing with micro millimeters here in our models and all model makers have, have, uh, have to go through an experience where you build a ground floor and by the time you reach the roof, uh, nothing matches up. So you really want to make sure that you get a good square. Not something like this one that I get. I mean, I'm not sure how perpendicular this one is, but I don't trust it because if you look here, like one centimeter on this steel ruler that is the same as all my other rulers it's not the same as one centimeter here so i don't know what what measurement this is but that makes me not want to trust this five dollar plastic i also have a little mini level here this level is actually uh, used to hang paintings like a line gets feed through here but because the base is flat i just use it to check the um to make sure my walls are straight. I also have this little thing here, which uh, is really thin, so that's a bit helpful. But to be honest, I, I bought this just to look cool, to have it in my kit and be like, oh yeah, I use this to measure stuff. But I, I mean, I don't know how practical this actually is. Um, maybe if I need to measure something curved, but I'm not sure if you ever need to do that or if it's even good practice to. But it's, it's cool, cool food I have. All right, now let's go on to uh, tweezers. So I think most of my work and probably your work too will be done with this. And because of that, you can probably go out and just buy these tweezers for like the really good ones um, for $20. I mean, the more expensive ones do seem to be able to grab things much better. However, I think um, if you're wondering if you should go out and spend the, the $30 to get the very, very expensive one compared to a kit like this that comes in uh, with four different types for 15 I think you should go with this kit first just so you have them and then over time you will figure out which ones you use the most and then you can go out and splurge on those because um, even if you have a really good pair of these ones, sometimes you just need this and it's good to have a cheap one of these just to do that one operation, if anything. So that's that. I also have um, this one here. Um, I just got these and these are called alligator clamps. And I'm very excited to use this because I have been caught in many situations, especially when I need to put windows in and uh, it's good to be able to, to finesse, uh, to be able to do this motion here, okay? Then we have pliers. Again, I got this in the kit. Um, 
Most of the time, the ones that I use would be this one here, this needle nose pliers, pretty self-explanatory to put something deep within. If I need to bend wire and stuff for trees, um, I will use this one. And then I will also use this to snap bits of wire off. Right, here I have some files. Files are really good to have. It's something that beginners don't tend to think um, they need. But sometimes you cut a piece, especially when the piece is not just a, a simple square piece and you need to just shape it just a little to make it fit, then your file is your best friend, especially when you're working with acrylics. Another good use for files is when um, you've, your model is finished and then your boss comes along and says, hey, you know what? I think I want to put a window in there. And, and you can't actually remove a part to, to cut a window in and you just need to drill a hole and then just start filing through. Uh, this is just something to cut fabric, it's called a thread cutters. They're really sharp and I think um, if you watch Adam Savage's videos, you will know once you cut anything else but fabric, then they're useless. So make sure your fabric scissors used only to cut fabrics. Um, yeah, I have like dentist tools, which are pretty cool. They're also used for sculpting, such as these ones here. And uh, I haven't done much sculpting. It's something that I really want to try, um, especially with, with uh, making concrete walls and stuff, uh, or, or ram earth walls maybe. I think it would be cool to be able to sculpt stuff. I haven't had a chance yet. These little, these tools, these pieces here, these pieces here, I don't really, I, I can't really tell you like a particular purpose to use them for, but when you need some, like a piece of, like a little finger to do something with, then you have it. You have to hook something to to position something, to just hold something in place while your other hand goes along. It's just very useful to have a set such as this. All right, here we have um, a jeweler's, jeweler's, jeweler's hammer. I can't pronounce that word properly. Anyways, I use this sometimes where I need to um, hammer in some nails. Not, not, not the real big nails, that I use a real hammer, but uh, smaller ones. Or if a part, I don't really want to glue it in just yet because changes need to be made. So, but um, I, I do need to have it tight. So I built the part to be quite fit fitting and then I just uh, knock it in with this. Um, I have a hand plane, which I, I cannot use this. I mean, I bought, I bought this so that I can you know, just shave off a little bit of wood for, a, part, for a, a wooden part that doesn't fit properly. I thought I could just shave a little bit off and then I fit it in, but it just doesn't work. I think either this is a, a bad design or I'm a bad user. You should comment below if you have any tips on, uh, on getting this to work. All right, and here I have a, a, quite a pin, a pin vise. I guess you could actually use it to, to uh, ram pins in. But all you can also call it a micro drill. And it's good, it's basically just a drill. And uh, I have a little set of um, drill bits here, really small ones. It looks just like a drill, so I just put this in. And then, uh, yeah, you just put it into your material. I don't know if this material is a bit, a bit hard. And then you just do this and you just screw it in like that. This is really good for making holes in finished models um, because you don't really want to bring a, bring a big power drill near your near complete model. I also use it when I, when I need to put trees in because the tree trunks are usually about as thick as this. The wire trees, I mean. All right, here we have a razor saw, which is good if you are making, let's say, columns and stuff. So it comes with a, a miter guide and you can put your piece in there and you can cut it down like this and it also has um, 45 degree slots already in here. Um, this razor saw is actually also good for, again, if 
you need to remove a wall, let's say, in the model that's already done. And sometimes it's just a bit difficult, but with the razor saw, you can just get in there and slowly, slowly cut away. Uh, they also have razor saws with um, that they are a little bit thinner in width, so that way you, you can really uh, get in there without disturbing the rest of the model. But you try anyway. And again, this is where the files come in, because you know, no matter how, if it's a finished model, it'll be very difficult to actually cut the piece you want out of there. So once you get the rough shape, uh, the rough hole, the rough gap, then you use your files to get in there and start filing away. Then we have a little acrylic cutter or a hoop blade, a hoop knife, a plastic cutter. Um, I'm going to make a, my next video after this, I'll be showing you how to cut acrylics. So I'll talk more, more about it then, but that's what this is for. All right, these here are more for electrical use, which I don't do a lot of, um, but I have made models where there's lights in them. And this is just a, a wire clipper when you need to cut wire, screwdrivers, for the mini, uh, mini tiny screws that you're gonna deal with sometimes. And if you drop a screw, this is a magnetic pickup tool. Speaking of picking up pickup tools, I also have this pickup tool that you can use to grab something that has fallen in your model. I will use this tool to try to grab it out. So that's pretty useful. Uh, I have a little scale person usually of different scales because sometimes you need to build something and there's no precise measurement for you're just going by eye and it's good to just have a little guy you can be like yeah that looks about right so that's good yeah finally I think everybody needs a cutting mat uh, obviously to protect the surface you're working on but also to do your cuts and and such um, if you're going to use adhesives such as the super glue and such then I will actually I don't, I don't have it with me now but I will get a, a piece of board or something and actually do my gluing on that because this is made out of some sort of plastic material too I think and especially especially the stuff that melts plastic would actually uh, melt the cutting mat and you actually get some of the green onto your material. So I often do my gluing on top of a, a timber board. So that's all the hand tools I use for model making. Now, for the tools that you absolutely need to get started, I feel you first need a cutting mat, a scalpel with a box of blades. You must get a box, a pair of tweezers, a box of paper clips to apply your glues with. Uh, in terms of measuring and marking, two lengths of steel rulers, as thin as you can get them, a scale ruler, and a machinist square or an engineer square, a really good one. This one, put your money on this one. And after that, the next step is to get a file and a micro drill and a plier. And these tools are sort of your next, your medium level stuff. And then get um, a hook knife or an acrylic cutter, especially if you're working with acrylics. I would really like to see the tools you use, so please share them down in the comments or feel free to ask if you have any questions. Thank you for your time watching this video and please subscribe if you want to see more.